On this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, it's Smash Week, and you know what that means. We're talking about deals on 3DS games. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including the reason Kirby survived the apocalypse and how Pokemon Go isn't a spinoff, apparently. Uh, Then on Thursday, we're going to be ranking the kingdoms from Super Mario Odyssey, which is going to be an adventure in and of itself. But in the meantime, Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. And can I tell you Mm. that part of the reason I'm doing so well is your hair looks fantastic tonight. Oh, thank you. It looks you. effortless. Mm-hmm. But I but well actually maybe it was, maybe it was. I was going to say it looks effortless. It's like ballet. Your hair is like ballet. Mm-hmm. Thank it, you. Thank when you. When done well, you. it looks effortless, but it takes a lot of work. And I'm wondering how you're feeling about this. Well, and like ballet, uh it there's a lot of work that goes into like the the front to the preparation of it, but then like on the night of it probably is effortless, right? Like their bodies know what to do. Mm-hmm. It's probably actually a lot of really hard work. <laughs> <laughs> They're athletes. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but uh, no. So I, I did a very like careful job of doing my hair yesterday. Uh, and, and you're reaping the rewards today. And I'm reaping the rewards of it today. Well, yeah. looks fantastic. It's the second day always. The first day, fine. It's like okay, it's get, it's getting by. Um, second, second day, mm, that's the money day. The Me- hard training paid off. You're like Rocky. I would say that I am like. Rocky is is Rocky in that new Creed movie? He must be, <laughs> if even for a moment, right? Maybe he's uh, working. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly like that. Exactly like that. Um, Mark, we've got some guest weather today, so uh, I say we we shall not tarry, or let us not dally. Uh, we got an email from Isaac. Uh, Isaac says, "I would like to request some guest weather, my friend. I live in." Okay, bear with me. It's. Fukue Varina. I love it. North Carolina. I'm so sorry for butchering the name of that. Uh, he says, it's a crap town, but it's where YouTube stars Rhett and Link grew up. And one time they, re- uh, and once upon a time, record an album at my dad's recording studio. That's cool. Uh, and we are to feel free to say that on the, uh, <laughs> on the episode, which I did. Yeah, we will, Isaac. Um, we've got friends who have worked for uh, Rhett and Link. Colin uh, worked for My Mythical Morning for. Um, a while. So, Good Mythical Morning, whatever the name of their <laughs> show is. Colin worked for them for a little bit. Um, and Colin talks with us about Castlevania. Uh, Mark, this weather here looks kind of like what we're experiencing, maybe a little bit colder. Yeah, it's 48 degrees right now as we're recording this. And uh, it's in the like 40s to 50s, little variance there. Yeah, gonna, well, looks like it's going to rain. You're going to get some rain this weekend. So, you know, watch out for that. We had some rain here uh, last week and last weekend, uh-huh. Thursday, Friday. Tell you what, man, LA don't know how to rain. No. We can't deal with it. We do not handle it. But here's something mm. keep fighting the good fight, uh, Fuque Verena. Yes. And I, I'm retiring big ups. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the other big ups still stand for everybody previously, but sure. now keep fighting the good fight. Keep fighting the good fight. A um, couple quick things to plug before uh, we, we move on to the rest of the show here. Um, I was on an episode of Inside the Disney Vault, um, which uh, is a podcast that Mark has been on before, um, to discuss Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, and two of the hosts on that show are Oscar Montoya and Rachel Chapman, who have been on this show. We talked about Pokemon and dance games, respectively. So you already know you love those people. You tolerate me from week to week. Uh, and I gushed about Ralph Breaks the Internet because I loved it. Um, also this week, I am going to be on Teen Creeps discussing Lois Duncan's uh, Daughters of Eve, and one of the hosts of that is Kelly Nugent, who uh, has also been on the show to talk about some Yoshi game. I forget, <laughs> I forget which one. Yoshi's Story, maybe? Uh, that's the N64 one? That, well, I don't know. The N64 one is the <laughs> one we, the talked, one we about. talked about. I think that's Yoshi's yeah. Story. Yeah, I believe it. Do we do a Nintendo podcast? <laughs> You wouldn't know it listening to us. <laughs> no, you would not. Speaking of things you wouldn't know from listening to us, you can borrow my copy of Sonic Forces. How do you do it? 
you send an email to us with your mailing address. Mm -hmm. And you send that to Nintendo Cartridge Society at at gmail.com. And then your name goes on a list and we send the thing to you and you can play it for as long as you want. It is currently out in the wild. When do I expect it back? I don't know. That's part of the fun. That is part of the fun. Also, I'm just wanna, I just want to continue to uh, like put this out there. If anyone is like mangling or somehow uh, defacing the packaging of this thing, cool. Like I'm into it. Wh- how, whatever quality it comes back to me in is great. Yeah, we're like cool teachers. Do what you feel. Yeah. I mean, we just want to see you express yourself. We're also coming up with another opportunity for you to express yourself. We're doing another big ranking episode. Mark, are you excited about, about I, this I love our ranking episodes. Yeah. So I'm super excited for this one. It's coming up January 10th. Mm-hmm. So you've got a little bit of time. And look, we're, we're going to need well-reasoned arguments here because the thing that we are ranking are series contributions to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Now, what does that mean, Patrick? Okay, so we're going to say... Okay, the Mario series. What do they bring to Smash Brothers? And is it greater than what Fire Emblem brings? Or better than what Pokemon brings? Now, there might be times where you're like, uh, you know, there are only two Earthbound characters here, but we love those Earthbound characters so much. Maybe that makes it more valuable or like a better input than like the Zelda franchise. So you can see why we need your help. This is super complicated. It's super complicated and the lines are fuzzy. What franchise does Yoshi belong to? His own? How about Donkey Kong? His own? (laughs) Or do they all belong to Mario? Does Starling count for Star Fox now? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) The great Starling contribution? Yep, 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 which is identical to the Star Fox contribution. You you guys better stop me before I get started. (laughs) Right, and Mark, I'm stopping you before you get started. We would like to have, tell us, tell us what are the best uh, uh, franchises contributing to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Again, you've got a lot of time to work on this one. But figure it out. Email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Oh, Mark, but in the meantime, let's get to what we've been playing this week. Patrick, six words for you. Oh. Super Mario Odyssey, Pokemon, let's go. Yes, this is correct. Uh, th- these are the games that we've been playing. I, I, how is uh, Let's Go it's great. treating you? Uh, I. Th- said it in the episode where we discussed it a few weeks back. I think it's the perfect Pokemon game for me. Yeah. I have no complaints. I'm really enjoying it. I find it very pleasant. I really just like being in the world. Um I yeah, I I I keep finding the good fight, Pokemon Let's Go, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Well you're bordering on overusing it now. <laughs> Just wait till we get to news. Oh, no. Um, and then we both have been playing Super Mario Odyssey uh, in an effort to better, uh, just to reacquaint ourselves with the kingdoms for our Thursday episode. I mentioned this to Mark before we started recording. Um, I have not really had the opportunity to play any other games this week, partially because I got lost in Super Mario Odyssey again. Um, man, keep fighting the good fight, Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> that's a good game yeah it is sorry i was taken aback <laughs> for 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 a moment there why? why well only because i'm like oh wait maybe we'll only ever be able to say find the good fight for yeah. this episode ever oh you think we're gonna burn it out in this episode <laughs> it feels like we might <laughs> <laughs> well Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, but come back on Thursday and hear more of our thoughts about Super Mario Odyssey and what it's like getting back into it. All right, Mark, that's what we've been playing this week. Let's look ahead to the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Guys, it's finally here. Yeah. It's a week of a huge Nintendo release, which means it's time for me to pull out the old chestnut where I pretend like I'm hyped for some random game on this list instead of the game we're actually all hyped for. Now, hold on a minute, because you actually are hyped for a game that's on this list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually, like, when Pokemon came out, yeah. right, I'm like, we all know what week it is. Horse Trainer is out. Uh, okay. Right? I've done this in the past. Oh, okay. Let's, 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 let's give you the setup. Okay. okay. So here comes the... Although we kind of did that at the beginning of the episode. Well, we'll keep fighting the good fight here. 
<laughs> anyway, Super Smash Brothers comes out on Friday. Yep, That's what it yep. comes down to. I don't really know what else to say. I'm excited. Uh, well, Katamari, as you as you mentioned, Katamari Damacy reroll is also coming out on Friday. I mean, no, I didn't mention that. Didn't you? <laughs> no, I that didn't would that is the ge- that is the game that you are genuinely <laughs> excited about, though. I mean, I'm excited about. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. I understand your point now. Yes, there are, there are actually multiple games on this list that I'm excited about. Yeah, me too. Uh, Guacamelee also mm-hmm. comes out on Monday the 10th, uh, or Guacamelee 2, rather, um, and I'm very excited for that. I did not pick it up when it came out on PlayStation because I was like, you know what? It's got to come to Nintendo platforms at some point. It is. It's a shame that it's you know three days after Smash, but what are you going to do? Um, and then there's also a Sega Genesis Classics Collection coming to the Switch on December 7th, and we wish it well. Also on December 6th, uh, there's a game called Conduct Together coming out, and the only reason I'm bringing this up, I'm sure it's a great game, is that when I was scrolling through the list, I thought it was Conduit Together, and I'm like, oh, did they remaster the Conduit from Wii? Oh, but and turn oh, it into a co-op game on Switch? But yeah, it's exclusively co-op, <laughs> like couch co-op. Sure. Um, I mean, it's uh, obviously a great week for games, uh, just because Smash Brothers is coming out. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what else you need. It's its own celebration of gaming. All right, Mark, let's get out of the new releases. Wait, I'm calling a halt to that. There are amiibo we did not discuss. Oh, whoa, amiibo audible. Uh, I'm calling an amiibo <laughs> audible, interrupting the music mid music. I have never done this before. Unprecedented. Um, Inkling Girl. Mm-hmm. Wolf. Yes. Ridley. Yes. All coming out Friday the 7th. Octoling Girl. Octoling Boy. Octoling Octopus. All coming out on the 7th. Yes. You asked for it. It's happening. That's right. You want it. You got it. I have most of these already <laughs> coming to my house. I can't tell you how long ago I pre-ordered all of these. It's like forever ago. But they are being delivered. Are any of these uh, like store exclusive? They are not. Oh, nice. Um, they are not. Which is, with, is, is definitely more convenient. Usually, whenever it's like, uh, this one's a Toys R Us exclusive, people are like, mm, it's an eBay exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. There we go. Mark, now we can close out the segment. Now it's time for a regular segment on our show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Mark, today we are going to be... Uh, Perhaps revisiting a topic, but uh, slightly slightly differently. Uh, we have previously determined which our favorite, which is our favorite Harry Potter book. But today we are going to rank them. Yeah, and I can't remember what we said last time. So no, I refuse to remember. I mean, it wasn't definitive. Uh, I think I probably said book three. I'm pretty sure I said Goblet of Fire. Okay, three and four. These are both great answers. Yeah. Okay, so is this we're gonna have to come up with a consensus ranking? I think so. We'll okay. see. We'll see if we can hash it out. So I mean, I'm gonna throw out a bottom book. Yeah. And that is going to be Order of the Phoenix. Oh, I was going to say Chamber of Secrets for bottom book. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I mean, you give because I think they're both bad. They're both C tier books, <laughs> yeah. right? You're right. Bad is hard. Right. Um, I mean, let's let's use like normal video game racing rankings, right? So C is the the worst. Uh huh. B is like the worst of the acceptable. A is great, and then S are for like the perfect ones. Yes. Okay. So using that scale, yes, those two are definitely at the bottom. Those are C class. Uh huh. Okay. Um, do we want to say what we think are like S class books? Because I, I I do think we can say that probably three and four. Um, yeah, Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of Fire are, are S class, and I'm gonna put mm. the first book up there as well in S class. Yeah, because I think it does a really good job. Like it knocks mm-hmm. it out of the park as far as like establishing the world and making you want to come back for more. Here's the thing: we know or assume anyway that books three and four were our number ones. Yeah, so there's no way that uh, the uh, Sorcerer's Stone is actually going to beat either of them. So right. I'm going to say, let's put it in A class, high A class, okay. A plus class. So 
my B class yes is uh Half Blood Prince okay and um I'm blanking on Deathly Hollows right okay so uh yeah I I I would agree with that as well which are good good but part of the problem with both of those uh it, it it's necessary but that doesn't make it fun like ripping off a band aid is they break the formula yes um. And because they're barreling towards a resolution, it's a little more fun than when five breaks the formula. Um, but you miss and like, well, f- five is also sort of like blazing its own formula. Mm-hmm. Like it, it it's taking what uh, is implied in four and making it explicit, and that's sort of what the rest of the series becomes. Uh-huh. Right. So, I guess what I'm saying like hmm. uh, six and seven, you miss the like. Uh, yeah, you miss Christmas at the school. You do, but yeah. you miss it less than in five because mm. the stuff happening in six and seven is more like fun in general, right? More interesting well, in general, and you're also just fresher off um, like the books that are so concerned with like, oh, is Harry going to be able to go to the Weasleys on <laughs> on spring break? I don't know why I'm saying it like this. I really like these books. <laughs> um, okay, 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 okay. Um, I might even argue though that book six is is a low a class book okay um i think the end of that book is so scary and exciting and spoilers i guess when uh yeah and sad also uh so no more spoilers (laughs) i took them back (laughs) um that that i feel like it achieves what the latter half of the series uh, like is going for most effectively. Okay, like so, I, I think it is the best of the five, six, seven books. I think yeah, I think that's totally fair. So I'm try- going to throw out a ranking here. Okay, um, three, four, uh-huh. uh huh, six, six, seven, uh, and then I'm going to go two, five. Five is my bottom. What one, two, five? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I Wait, th- no, no, I, I maybe like the first book more than I like Deathly Hollows. Nope. Uh, okay, no, I think I think that's right. Well, then we said that it was an A-class book, uh-huh. right? Um, yeah, so, we, yes, yes. Okay, this is important. <laughs> okay, so top of the list is uh, uh, the Prisoner of Azkaban. The Prisoner of Azkaban. Followed by Goblet, Goblet of Fire. Fire. And then the uh, uh, Half Blood Prince. Half Blood Prince. And then, then uh, Philosopher's Stone or mm-hmm. Sorcerer's Stone. That's right. And then, uh, uh, oh boy, and then Deathly, Deathly Hollows, and then Chamber of Secrets, and then Order, Order of the Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay, where in that do you put, uh, I guess there, there are a few other, um, tomes, tomes that we can consider putting in here Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Uh, and what was the other book? I can't even remember it now. Uh, so like, uh, uh, some kind of weird plant book, <laughs> <laughs> a history of wands, maybe. I, I I haven't really read either of those, so I don't feel like I can place it. Have you read Cursed Child? I have not read Cursed the Child. Oh, the had... the printed version of the play. Okay, uh, I have not. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Do you? Uh, does that go in your canon at all? No, it's like its own. Well, I guess well, we'll I never. Guess, I guess we will. We'll never fact, know for sure. Never know. Uh, I that's the first one of those that we've done that like had an end to it, <laughs> and then we had to keep talking. Uh, we were accompanied today by the Randolph College Chamber Orchestra with soloist William Parrish Jr. and conducted by Randall Spear. All right, Mark, let's get into the news. Like we mentioned above, a little game called Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is coming out this week, and Nintendo has revealed that if you have saved data from Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, you'll automatically unlock a partner Pikachu or partner Eevee spirit in the game. Presumably, if you bought both games and have saved data for them both, you'll unlock both spirits as well. That is exceptionally cute. They should have actually done this for every Nintendo game yeah that would have been super fun like if since since i i have uh uh, mario tennis aces i should get a waluigi spirit i should just have it um if you haven't played pokemon let's go you both these spirits can be accessed like the normal way as well right 
by so ran- it's randomly encountering them. <laughs> yeah, it, so it's not like an <laughs> no, exclusive. That's weird, by right? Any means. Is that a, in in Pokemon Let's Go there are no random encounters? In Smash Brothers there are. Uh, it's like it's like matter. You can't get rid of it. Sure, you it's know, gotta go somewhere. It's gotta go somewhere. Uh, also, in the lead, <laughs> you of- can't get rid of it. <laughs> That's just, I mean, that's science. No, that's the conservation of matter. No, you're right. Uh, in the lead up to the game, director Masahiro Sakurai gave an interview on Famitsu in which he admitted that part of the reason Kirby is the main hero of World of Light is because he created the IP and he really likes that character. That seems like a fair reason. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I, I think it is also fair to just say that, like, Kirby, for whatever reason, uh, to go back to our our rankings, our our classes, is an S class character, right? Absolutely, he is a super powered character. He's also a little. He's the rare, like incredibly powerful everyman. Yeah. Now, how do you think he's an everyman? <laughs> Who do you know in your life that is like Kirby? I don't know. He seems like pleasant. <laughs> Who do you know that's pleasant? <laughs> You're right. That's a fair point. Um, but also, he wanted to point out, it. Uh, the hero had to be a character that could quickly escape from the apocalypse and like have a logical way to escape. Warp star, baby. Yep. Um, so that's fun. Last week, we talked about Zelda series producer. Uh, I always... Every time I get this wrong. It's A.G. A.G. Like, uh, like Steve A.G.'s last name. Oh. The perfect reference. Uh, A.G. Aonuma, maybe, possibly, almost, kind of, I don't know, teasing Skyward Sword for Switch. And in an article uh, reporting on his, almost certainly a joke, uh, Tom Phillips of Eurogamer relayed that he's heard that Nintendo wants to release one Zelda title a year. Um, They were kind of close to that for a while, right? Uh, yeah, I think like maybe there's a year in there uh, in the past 10 years that they didn't release the Zelda game, but well, I'm... I mean now 2018. No, uh, Hyrule Warriors. Did that come out this year? I thought that came out last year. No, Fire Emblem Warriors came out last year. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. So Very good. yeah, we we've had one a year, with the exception of maybe one year since at least 2008. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of those are uh, re-releases and remasters and stuff. Oh, for sure. But I mean, those are uh, always great experience. Like. I loved going back to Wind Waker. I loved going back to Twilight Princess. Um, and, you know, in my mind, o- Ocarina and Majora's Mask, the 3DS versions are the definitive ways to play them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they, I'm, I'm glad that they, I guess, can want to continue doing this. Yeah, so basically don't be surprised if there's a Zelda game of some sort on Switch next year. Even if it's not necessarily a Skyward Sword remaster, um, I mean, I'm still holding out hope for uh, Link's Crossbow Training too, <laughs> or just Link's Crossbow pr- Training Deluxe. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> DX. How, how about Link's uh, Longbow Training? How Love about that? it. Yes, please. Um, speaking of Skyward Sword on Switch, a Nintendo spokesperson responded to the rumors, telling or commented on them, anyways, telling Eurogamer, "quote At this time, we have no plans to release Legend of Zelda: Skyward Sword on Nintendo Switch." Um, that doesn't mean anything. No. It means as much as Aonuma joking about it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you can't believe any... The only thing you can believe from Nintendo is when they say, we are going to release this video game. They will release that video game. <laughs> no, that's even like... What's the last time they said that they were going to release the game that they didn't? And then didn't release it? Yeah. I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Therefore, I win! <laughs> Fighting the good fight! <laughs> Uh, in a new interview, Pokemon Let's Go director Junichi Masuda insisted that his games weren't a spin-off for the series, but were in fact core entries. He even addressed the game's ability to connect to Pokemon Go um, and said that if the function is well received, we could expect to see that in future games as well. Um, this feels like a defensive move to me. Yeah, I, well, which part? Both parts? Uh, yeah, mostly the first part, that him being like, this isn't a spin-off. This is this is a real game. Yeah. It's a core game in the series. Yeah, I I it it does seem like a weird point to make. Yeah. I mean it's and it's also it's kind of a weird question to ask. Like, what do, what do we mean? <laughs> what do we mean when we say is this a core Pokemon game? Right. I mean, I guess it's not Mystery Dungeon. It's not Mystery Dungeon. It's not it's Coliseum. Not, it's not Snap. Um, that's the name of the picture-taking one, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
look, Link's crossbow training too, Pokemon Snap too. My demands are simple. <laughs> they should be one game, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So it, it's a that th- that feels defensive. Uh, do you see something defensive in we should expect to see Pokemon Go inter- integration in future games? No, not necess- not necessarily. But I do wonder if the two are related. Where it's like, look, Let's Go isn't a spinoff because w- we could do the Go stuff in a ra- a core game. I mean, the thing with Pokemon Go is that it's bigger than anything right Mm -hmm. it's a huge game that people are still playing um it would be weird for them to walk away from that right like if pokemon games can keep like tying into whatever people are finding uh so attractive about pokemon go why wouldn't they keep doing that right that's it uh okay so some good slash interesting news for people still playing their 3ds's and wii u's we wheeze you. Uh, there are a bunch of compelling deals popping up on the My Nintendo uh, 3DS and Wii U software discount section. Yeah, so I noticed this uh, going through just uh, my My Nintendo account, and you know you can you've always been able to buy discounts on um, games, but sort of the game selection is either older games or uh, games you probably didn't want in in the first place. But you can use platinum points, which are the points that you get for just like interacting with. They're a lot. the garbage points. They're the garbage points that like you get for like playing uh, Mario Run or Dragalia Lost or whatever. Um, and so you can uh, use them to get between thirty and forty percent off games like Skyward Sword on Wii U, Wind Waker HD also on Wii U, Pikmin Three on Wii U, Ever Oasis on 3DS, Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix on 3DS. Ultimate NES Remix on 3DS, and like a bunch of others. Those are just like the highlights that I was like, these are good deals um, and good games that people would actually want to play. Yeah, and it runs for a while. It says that the deals end like the 1st of March 2019. Right. I mean, if it was the 1st of March 2018, we'd have a real problem on our <laughs> hands. Um, but yeah, I mean, I turned on Mario Run today because I was like, oh, I want to I want to get some more of these platinum points because they don't have enough to get like all of the discounts that I want. Um, but like, I'm totally going to use it to pick up um, Skyward Sword on Wii U because uh, with all this talk of uh, could this game be ported and blah, 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 I realized that I am not as well versed in it as I would like. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to pick it up. But if I can spend, you know, it's tw- it's twenty bucks on the Wii U eShop right now, um, and well, before discount, before discount, oh. yeah, and then you know, discount on top of it. If I pay fourteen bucks for it, like, yeah, I'm there. Um, uh, there are also some gold point rewards, but they feel a little bit less compelling to me. Still good games. Um, uh, some of the best ones are thirty uh, percent off on Fire Emblem Echoes: Shadows of Valentia on 3DS, which I really liked and is a a, a totally awesome uh, Fire Emblem game. Xenoblade Chronicles on new 3DS, Xenoblade Chronicles X on Wii U, Majora's Mask on 3DS, and Super or, uh, Paper Mario Color Splash on Wii U as well. So they're good, actually some good and kind of exciting deals there. And I know we don't normally talk about deals, but these seemed interesting to me. German retailer Media Market or Marked has a product listing on its website called Assassin's Creed Compilation for the Nintendo Switch. Other than a potential release date of March 29th, 2019, there is no other information listed here, including which games would possibly be part of a theoretical compilation. Um, of course, there's no confirmation of this game's existence at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, Media Market doesn't have quite the reputation for accuracy as retailers like Amazon or Gamefly, where usually when something when a listing leaks, it ends up being true. Right. So we don't, there, we maybe can't draw any meaningful conclusions from this, um, but it might be fun to just like speculate on what an Assassin's Creed uh, compilation might be. Yeah. I Have they remastered, or I guess, do you even need to remaster a PS3 game for PS4? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you, I yeah, guess you, you do. do. But like, have they done that for like the first three Assassin's Creed games or anything? Um, I'm not sure. It was so three. Which one was three? Three was the American Revolution one. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think they have. Um, because there's uh, there's like the original one, uh, Altair, just the one game, and then there's the three Assassin's Creed two games, um, the Ezio trilogy, and then there's the American Revolution one, and those are all like last generation games. Um, is that like 
the about that time that you would be thinking that they would be um re or that they would be compiling those or do you think like some sort of scaled down versions of like origins and odyssey or yeah for some reason that feels less likely to me which uh that they would scale down origins and odyssey yeah because we saw them doing the um t- streaming version yeah of odyssey the most recent one yeah uh in japan and so I don't know. It just doesn't seem possible to run those game ones on Switch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it certainly seems like it would be a, a hurdle for them to overcome. But, like, I also, like, I wonder what Assassin's Creed games they think have, like, any sort of, that, that like, people would want to go back and play. Like, at, the, at this point, I feel like Assassin's Creed has a little bit of, like, a reputation for being, like, pretty samey and, like, um, kind of outdated. Like, I feel like that was true until, uh, was it Origin? Yeah, or- like Origins the most like was the one where they they had taken like a year off, um, and then like came back with uh Origins, which people were into, um, and then Odyssey has been like kind of a phenomenon this year, um, but I mean like before that you got to kind of reach back to like uh Black Flag. Right, Being and, one and that like people liked. Th- three wasn't even that well received. No, no, not at all. Um, so I, I, I guess like if uh, that's the one that makes the most sense to me are those like first three games to put those into a collection because yeah, the middle years outside of Black Flag are yeah. just kind of like a little samey, a little meandering. What? If, what if? I'm listening. It's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's every single Assassin's Creed game, including that PSP one. Or no, maybe it was a Vita. It was a Vita one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sounds great, right? Uh, finally, we don't really talk about it a lot on the show, but the game awards are this Thursday night at 5.30 p.m. That's right. Uh, unlike last year, Nintendo doesn't have a huge pres- presence among the nominees. Uh, yeah, I mean, because last year, you know, Odyssey and um, Breath of the Wild were all over everything, and even games like Splatoon Two were showing up and stuff like, and Mario Kart probably. Um, so it's it's a little weird to see them not like to see. You know, it hasn't been a like huge year. For yeah, it was Nintendo definitely a quieter year. So there just are yet there are some nominations for like Mario Car- Tennis Aces, Labo. Super Mario Party. Yeah, all of those games are uh, nominated for Best Family Game. Um, and the other two in the category are Overcooked 2 and Starlink, which are, like, for me, kind of, like, de facto Nintendo yeah, games. Yeah, the only reason anybody talks about Starlink at all ever is because of the Star Fox connection. Yeah, and it seems weird to me to, like, label that as a family game. I don't really know. Do you know what? I, I The Best Family Game feels a little bit like uh, the Best Animated Feature a category in the Oscars where they're sure. like, we don't want these games to ever get nominated for like best Real overall awards. game. So you know we're we're gonna create a separate category, right, to acknowledge them. And you know, then last year Super Mario Odyssey it breaks through like Beauty and the Beast. It's got to get nominated for just Game of the Year. <laughs> uh, other games that are exclusive or co- uh, might as well be exclusives on Switch are Celeste, which is nominated all over the place. Octopath Traveler, um, The Messenger, and Yoku's Island Express. So, yeah, a, a sp- sort of smaller showing for um, Nintendo stuff, at least as far as uh, the nominees are concerned. But, yeah, you're not watching the Game Awards for the nominees anyways. The awards are an afterthought. Right. What you're I, there for. Right. And if you're anything like Mark and I, maybe you're not even watching the, <laughs> the Game Awards. Because, <laughs> yeah, if you're paying attention at all, you're paying attention for the announcements for the new exclusive trailers. Sweet, sweet trailers. And Nintendo usually brings something to the Game Awards. Uh, they launched Zelda's second DLC during the awards show. Um, last year. Last year. That's where Breath of the Wild had one of its big reveals. Uh, of course, that's where Cranky Kong was revealed for Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Uh, yes. We all remember where we were for that. Uh, big rumor Going around right now. Oh, yeah. That this is where Metroid Prime 4 has its first showing. Ooh, Metroid Prime 4. I don't want to be anywhere near the internet when Metroid Prime 4 is revealed because I don't think, no, it it doesn't matter what it is. People, I don't think, are going to be happy with. I mean, do you want to be anywhere near the internet when they don't reveal anything (laughs) about Metroid Prime 4? Yeah, it's just like, I don't want to be anywhere near the internet. Full stop. (laughs) Mark, we're all over the internet. That's where people are getting this show is on the internet. Um, uh, Metroid related. 
if they do a Metroid Prime 4 thing, do you think they are also like Prime Trilogy also exists? Like we saw with Bayonetta, how they announced Bayonetta 3, and then we also got uh, Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Here is less. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, just uh, the Metroid Prime trilogy as it exists on Wii, all three games are, uh, like, reworked for the motion controls, Mm. um, which, uh, makes me like them all less. Uh, I, I tried to go back and, like, replay them, uh, maybe, like, a year or so ago. I probably talked about it on the show. It would be weird for me to have done it and not talk about it on the show. Um, but yeah, the the motion controls make it feel like a more antiquated experience. So I wonder if they would rework it so that um, they all worked with sort of traditional controls. Um, but that also feels like uh, not really what Metroid Prime 3 was about. Yeah, it's and the first two games, yeah, they didn't, it's not like they were dual analog or even really like set up to be um, yeah, this is a great point. Changing to dual analog, also, and I know they're calling it Metro Prime Four. At least they did in the re- reveal. Yeah, but if Metro Prime Four is enough of a departure from the first three games in the series, yes, which would make sense given you know we're a few generations past the last game. It'll be using a completely different control scheme than any of the games. Yeah. Um, if it's different enough, I don't know that they'll want necessarily the direct comparison if it's not like a direct continuation right i mean and i don't think it would really hurt them too much to get rid of the prime branding like that that's nice in some ways but in other ways like having that four on there kind of sucks as well like when the numbers start to get that high it's kind of like okay well let's leave the numbers behind so you get back up to mario kart 8 and then get that (laughs) you get that eight back out um but yeah it's i i would also I would actually be surprised if the game is called Metroid Prime 4 colon something. You know, that it would just be Metroid some if they if they changed the name of this game to Metroid Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name of the the canceled one, right? Uh I think just Dread. Just Dread, Metroid I Dread. I think. Well, Look, we'll never know. We <laughs> we will never know. Are there other uh, other like uh things that you are like hyped for or think that it's it's possible Nintendo does at the game awards i don't know i would love uh it, w- it would be fun if to be surprised it'd be you know i mean i would love to see a new zelda game whether that's like a majora's mask remix mm-hmm. of or like majora's mask like remix of breath of the wild or a new 2d zelda um yeah i mean i'm kind of i'm yeah, I do a what, Nintendo what, podcast. I'm kind of on board for right, 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 whatever right. they want to do. We're way in the bag for this thing already. Um, I mean, I would like to see this Star Fox. Uh, oh yeah, GP that's a great point. That, that we that had been teased or not teased, but like sort of leaked a, a while back, like a racing game with Star Fox, um, maybe being developed by Retro. Um, that would all be awesome. Um, but yeah, I like you. I'm sort of just on board for whatever Nintendo is going to show me. You know, we haven't seen for a while a Paper Mario game. <clears throat> Excuse me, a Paper Mar. <laughs> a paper mario game oh well, when you when you hit that gypsy woman with your car on the way over well, here yes i am, <laughs> i am gradually getting thinner until i will waste away to nothing <laughs> what mark <laughs> all right let's get out of the news all right that is going to do it for this episode of nintendo cartridge society if you would please remember to rate review and subscribe on apple Podcasts. All of that helps us out tremendously. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends and enemies on Facebook and Twitter. Um, doesn't really matter uh, how many people you get this in front of. Uh, any any one person helps us. Mark, you like that, right? I love it. There we go. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MK Mitchell, and the show is at Nin Cart Society. You can check out the Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape at Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apeatbetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you for listening. Campfire.